All right, so, so for some finishing techniques, we just want to kind of get fresh eyes on it and look at anything that's just clearly not working as well. Uh, delete anything that's a, an eyesore or is distracting. Like this edge of the tree is not needed. I like that rock edge much better. So at this point, make you know some strong decisions. It's just to tighten it all up. You can do some final little dodges and burns, hitting edges, deciding whether they should be bright or dark is pretty important. So these are called spot touches. thinking what should be dark and what should be light, <laughs> you, know, you have control of that. And so once you're done kind of futzing around with that stuff, as much fun as it is, we're going to now fill this with some atmosphere. So it doesn't quite work in my composition so far, which makes it feel kind of like a, a landscape painting rather than an environment is that the atmosphere isn't there yet. Like everything's pretty much in sharp focus and it doesn't feel like the air itself has a quality to it. Even though you've got all this mist, where is that mist in the foreground? So what I'm gonna do is again, a little bit of internal compositing, but you can take this from an outside source as well. Um, for one instance, if I feel like I need more mountain back there, I can take the rock from my foreground and just flip it and push it up, you know, behind the mist a little bit. And maybe sink it down through my layers. So it is actually behind the mist. So that shadow is kind of there. And I can transform it. And warp it to work with the shape. And then erase away from it. because I'm thinking of this composition and I need it to go kind of taper. So we're just adding layers of subtlety at low opacities and then erasing away from it. So these are called texture overlays. We're still not creating our own pixels, but we can do a lot to kind of paint over everything, like glazing a painting. Kind of bring these things in. So let's see what it would look like without that. All right, so that, that brought in a lot of mist and more of the rock in. Now, how can we bring that mist into the foreground? 
Well, let's, let's just go back to my reference. And these colorful myths. Right, some of them are very multicolored, but I'm just gonna go for a, kind of a, an easy texture overlay, which is this, it's just all filled in. I'm gonna put it on top of everything, even though it's crazy colors. Well, actually I'll start it back here so you can see the difference between foreground and background. So I'm gonna stretch it just on top of everything, right? And then how do I glaze it? Well, I can just take its opacity down, right? And that kind of pushes everything even further into the distance. Now let's move it up above the other layers. So now it kind of pushes that tree into the distance, pushes those foreground rocks to the distance. Let's push it over the top of everything, nearly, except for that little accent. Okay, now I am going to duplicate it. Just say select all and command J, duplicate. That way, it is its own thing that I can erase from. So with a huge eraser at 28% opacity, I'm gonna start in the foreground and start erasing. And maybe take my opacity down even more and start hitting it in the middle ground. Start erasing. Again, with my pressure sensitive eraser. Erased too much in that background. Let's go back in my history. There we go. Trying to get a little bit more of that tree. And now I'm going to tighten it up and just make the mist a little bit clearer. Just because it's such a bizarre element. It's not in the atmosphere, it's on the, the earth plane. It's still with a 0% hardness. Really blending these in. And this way, I, it is like I'm painting, even though I'm doing it with other people's pixels. I'm deciding where the, the emphasis is, where the focus comes forward. Oh, it's too much. All right, and then I can decide if I like it or not, right? And what's great about doing this as a texture overlay on its own layer is I can play with that opacity and dial it down or dial it up as much as I want. And if your texture uh, has too many kind of sharp edges to it, you just use Gaussian Blur on it, kind of take it down. So that's one finishing technique, very helpful. Let me add another texture overlay just to show you those skills again. So what if I took this pink cloud? I'm gonna to go to the very top. I'm gonna to bring that pink cloud in and you can just search kind of uh, texture overlay in a Google image search. You want them to be large, but they don't need to be as large because it's okay for them to soften. And I'm gonna stretch this across everything which will automatically soften it a little bit. You can even warp it, kind of have it settle in the foreground, like so. 
And then just because this has a lot of different edges, I'm going to Gaussian and blur it. So it's really just a series of tones like that, or even like this. You know, it's all going to be helpful. I'll go ahead and rasterize it so that I can take its opacity down and then delete away from it. And I can play with its color. So if I go to hue saturation, right now it's pink, which kind of works for me. But if I change it, I can make it any color spectrum I want. And it will color everything in the composition, which is kind of nice. Let me try something a little weird, maybe something like that. And see if I like that better or that better. Yeah, I'll, I'll try this. Now I use a really big brush, a really low opacity, 0% hardness. And I start taking away from the foreground. Sometimes mist gathers at the foreground. And I decide what points of focus I want. And it's very important that this is a texture, or not a texture, a pressure sensitive eraser you're using. So it has some variety to it. So it doesn't look mechanical. Let my computer catch up with me. Save it along the way. Maybe up my opacity a little bit, shrink my brush a little bit. My computer isn't working so hard. And then bring out some of these foreground elements. And so I'm filling up the air with stuff. And then I can Pull it back if I need to. Sometimes you want the color that that air gives you, but you don't want the, um, the loss of contrast. So then you can use pin light, which will give you some of those color hits, or soft light. Or you can do a duplicate and do both of them. Like, that's pretty nice. So if I duplicate and then turn this one to soft light, take the opacity down on both, kind of erase away, and really customize it into my fantasy landscape. It's okay if you overdo it. I always tend to overdo it. That's why we do it on different layers. You can always take them down. I'm going to save. And now I'm going to submit uh, the two things that are required for this assignment. I'm going to submit the screenshot of the sketch that I was working with, just as a JPEG. Or I guess as a screenshot, as a PNG. Screenshots are always PNG. And then the last thing I'm going to do is crop this composition down. Remember, we have those guides. To save space, you want to crop it down. And to save memory to your postcard orientation. And then we're going to save this as a PSD file with all the layers. And then we will save it as a JPEG with a quality that makes it fewer than five megabytes and put that up to PhotoBucket. This will be the number two thing we submit. The compositional sketch will be the number one thing you submit. Do make sure that your screenshot is flipped so that we can read it clearly and so that the compositions match, right? With the near foreground, the foreground, the middle ground, all that. Okay, so once it's cut out,